My name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our program. Now, today's message was actually filmed in Laurel, Mississippi at one of our conferences, and we had a mighty move of God. Be blessed by this message. The title of this message today is Rise Up and Build. The enemy has been working overtime in many of your lives, and many of you watching by television, and some walls have come down. You know what I'm talking about. And the enemy came in with sickness out of nowhere. Maybe it was with your family, family issues. Maybe it was your finances. Maybe it was your ministry. Maybe it was your church. I mean, we could go on and on. But I can tell you this day, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Because God has a great plan for you. And we're going to build some walls back in our lives so we can walk in victory. We got work to do. The enemy, if he can't take you out, he's going to try to wear you out with distractions. Do you know what I'm talking about? If it's not one thing, it's something else. So we're going to talk today about Nehemiah, and we're going to learn from him because we're going to build some walls back this year and walk in victory. Are y'all ready for the word? Yes. Amen. 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 All right, let's go to Nehemiah 2, 16 through 18. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I had done. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or the others who did the work. Then I said to them, you see the distress that we're in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jericho that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me. Also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Y'all say, rise up up. and build. build. And then they set their hands to this good work. Father, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your presence that we feel. Lord, anoint me to teach this word. Anoint every heart to receive. In Jesus' name. Now, to give you just a little history of these scriptures, Nehemiah was not a prophet. In fact, he was a cupbearer. And a cupbearer in those days was a dangerous job because he had to sample the wine and the food to make sure that the king wasn't poisoned. Now, how would y'all like that job? You would pray he didn't have any enemies, wouldn't you? But he was a trusted official. But he heard the word that Jerusalem, the walls were still down after they were set free from bondage after 70 years, and the gates were still burned. And in those days, the cities had a wall around it that would protect them from the enemies. So really what happened, the enemies could just come in and could destroy them. And this broke Nehemiah's heart. Now, Nehemiah didn't say, well, they need to do something. Y'all know what I'm talking about? We're living in a time now where we always are saying they need to do something. This country needs to do something. Well, y'all, it starts with us. It's not going to be the government. I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. It's only Jesus that's going to change this world. But it starts with us doing a little bit at the time. But it broke his heart. 
You know, uh, they say that there's three kinds of people. Y'all see what category you're in. People that make things happen, people that watch things happen, and people that wonder what happened. <laughs> we have a lot of people that loves to give your opinion that they want to watch things happen. That pastor needs to do more. They need to do more. But we got to learn we're they, and we got to put feet to our faith. See, we're waiting on God. God, we're waiting on you. But no, he's saying, I'm waiting on you to do what I've called you to do. Be obedient. Put feet to your faith. So what did Nehemiah do? He sought God. He prayed and he fasted before he made the decision that I know what I want to do. See, a lot of times we don't want to hear what God's got to say anyway. Y'all are too quiet. I'm talking to a bunch of angels here today. Because we got our mind made up what we want to do anyway. And then when it don't work out, we want to rebuke the devil. Get back, devil. And the Lord says, it's not the devil, it's you. Not doing what I told you to do. So he sought God and God said, okay, you're the man for the job. So he went to the king and asked permission to get off. And the king gave him favor. Why? He was a trusted servant. And the reason God has called you to do what you're doing, and all of you here today, you were a trusted servant of God. See, there's a lot of people, they want a double portion anointing. You pastors know what I'm talking about. Oh, I want your double portion anointing. And they're not even faithful to show up. If you're not obedient in the small things, you're not going to be given anything greater to do. You got to start out when, where you are and move with it and put feet to your faith. God is faithful when we're faithful to him. So he started this job of building the wall back. He gave everybody a job. He assigned them all a duty. Well, guess what happens when you start building your wall back? The enemies come. The enemies come. Here they come. Tobiah, Sanballat. Who do you think you are? You're a cupbearer trying to be a contractor. This wall is too far gone. It'll never be built back. It, there's no way. You don't know this city. You can't build a ministry here. You're a woman in ministry in Mississippi. You think it's going to work for you, sister? <laughs> Don't you know Lord knew I was a woman when he called me? <laughs> he wasn't surprised. <laughs> but I can tell you, when you start building your wall back, regardless if it's healing or whatever, there's going to be people that's going to come against you and oppose you. You believe in healing? Come on. Write your obituary. You think you'll always, you'll never be happy. You've disappointed God. You'll never be free from those addictions. But you got to keep on building. If we had a, if I tell you, I have, if any of you have ever been in ministry, have ever been talked about? <laughs> you don't even have to be in ministry for that, do you? I've had people to, if she's preaching on Wednesday night, I'm going to Walmart to get my groceries. And she actually told me that. <laughs> He's got to know you tough if you call to any kind of ministry. And everybody in this room, you're called to do something for the kingdom of God. And you got to develop some tough skin or a soft, and a soft heart or you would quit overnight. <laughs> so the attacks started coming in. And... <laughs> So what did he do? He said, God will do this. So he didn't tell him that he had already got permission from the king, but how did he handle the attacks? How do you handle attacks? <laughs> you got the right answer, Rebecca. You get an A today. All right, let's go to Nia. First of all, he prayed about everything. Every problem, every attack, he prayed about it first. Nehemiah 4, 4 through 5. Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out 
from before you, for they have provoked you to anger before the builders. So what he was telling God, he said, this is your problem. Do you know many of us are fighting battles that we don't need to be fighting? The Lord, he told me this morning, he said, it's time for you to let go and let God. You cannot control every situation. You can't control who comes and who don't come. Some of y'all need to hear that word. It's the season for us to let go. You can't control your family. You've done all you know to do. You got to let go and let God. Some of you are staying in bed awake all night, worried about grown children. But after a while, you just got to say, I trust you, Lord. And sleep. And rest. So he started this wall back in his... So, so if somebody is rejecting you... See, we want to take everything so personally. I learned after a while, not everybody's going to like you, pat you on the back, and tell you how great you are. And I'm a sweet person. They'll judge you and don't even know me. I've had people to come up to me in Walmart and apologize for hating me. <laughs> from what other people said about me. And I'm thinking, well, you didn't have to tell me that. I'm only here to, walk, to shop today. <laughs> but we got to take it. If somebody is rejecting you, it's not you. If you're doing something for the kingdom of God, they're rejecting God. And the best thing to do is sometimes to keep our mouth shut, which is the hardest thing to do because we want to tell people off in a professional kind of way. Sometimes, you know, we can rebuke the devil all day long, but the best form of spiritual mouth for, um, uh, warfare is to keep our mouth shut. And that is hard for all of us. So when the Lord tells you, when you pray about how you need to build your wall back, you need to ask God, give me a plan. Because somebody that's never built a wall is going to try to tell you how to do it. Well, I think you need to do this. Well, have you ever pastored a church? No. <laughs> but I can tell you what I think. Sometimes you don't need an opinion. You need to be talking to God. And even if it's your health, you know, let's say if you're building your wall back with your health, how do you want me to do this, Lord? Do I need to change my diet, exercise, medicine, or do I just believe for healing or all of it? Same thing about, you know, building relationships or your ministry, your church. Pray about it. And he'll give you direction. Okay. Well, that failed. They kept building. So the threats kept coming in. So then they came along and they, they scared the people who were working to build this wall back and they were scared to death. So he said, okay, what we're gonna do, half of you are gonna have a sword, the other half are gonna work and we're gonna get this wall built back. The enemy's not gonna stop us. So when you're building your personal wall back, whatever it is, you better put on the whole armor of God and fight. Because if you think the enemy is going to sit back and say, oh, let them be healed. Let their ministry grow. Let their church be the largest in the county. If you think that, no. The enemy is going to do everything he can. And you've got to fight. You've got to take back what the enemy has stolen from you. This is a time for the church to rise up in power. It's time for us to come out of the closet. So many now, well, what if COVID tried to shut us all down? Some people never bounce back from that. Now people are like, oh, what if there's a nuclear war? Well, we're going to go to be with Jesus one way or the other, but right now we got work to do. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. And he's building an army of Christians that are on fire for him that have a boldness. Not a bunch of mealy mouse, little mouse Christians. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm not, I'm timid. You get excited about something, friend. Why do I get excited about Jesus? <laughs> so you've got to put, and we got to be there encouraging each other. Because I can tell you, some people, everybody's fighting a battle of some form. Some people are better at covering it up than others. 
So we need to be there. We're all about building the kingdom of God. This isn't man's kingdom. It's not a competition. When the church can understand we're all in it to build the kingdom of God, not our kingdom, his kingdom. You know? But I can tell you the enemy is trying to shut up the truth. Let me tell you about my dream the other night. I had this dream and I had a, a, a sermon in my hand. And there was like a wind, I mean a mighty wind that came through and it blew that sermon out of my hands. But not only that, then I started choking. Have you ever, any of you ever felt like you were just being smothered? It was like I was being smothered. And I couldn't get, and it was like it just went in then, I woke up, and it was like I still couldn't breathe. And I was trying to speak Jesus. And it was like it was trying to, y'all thinking, it's the truth. I'm telling you, the devil is alive and well, and he's a spirit. He's not a cartoon character, like a lot of people think. And so when I finally got Jesus out, it fled. Because I knew right then, the enemy wants to shut me up just like he wants to shut up the truth. But this isn't a time for let the enemy shut us up. We gotta be bold for Jesus, amen? And speak the truth. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Demons have to flee to the name of Jesus. No wonder they're trying to take the blood of Jesus out of sermons and hymns. But if you are offended by the blood, you don't have a gospel because it's all about the blood of Jesus. We need the gifts of the Spirit in the church. We can't say, welcome Holy Spirit, but keep your gifts at home now. I've never understood that. Raise your hands in worship and not a soul in the place raises their hands. Woo, help me Jesus. It's the truth. We have got to, you know, that's where people are tired of religion. Are you on TV? Are y'all tired of religion? I had a lady to call the prayer line said, I sat in church for 20 years and I never knew Jesus. But she said, that message today spoke to me, and I'm ready to know the living Jesus. It's about a relationship with Jesus. So we got to put on the whole armor of God. Keep speaking the truth. Because what you're going to find, people are really hungry for more of Jesus. They're tired of going through religion. They want a real, see, because when the presence of the Lord shows up, that's when miracle signs and wonders take place. You don't have to justify it and say, okay, the Holy Spirit is here and nobody feels anything. Because when he's there, you know what? Lives are changed. People are convicted of their sin when the Holy Spirit is in the house. The captives want to be set free when the Holy Spirit is in the house. So it's all about his presence. He's a miracle working God. Well, okay, let's move on. Do you think the the attack stopped? No. No. I tell you, the enemy, if he can't stop you with one thing, he'll come against you with something else. Well, the next struggle they had was in within. The rich Jewish people, leaders that were getting rich. There was a famine in the land. They were having to sell their children as slaves to pay their bills. But Nehemiah took authority over that. Took authority. We as leaders have to take authority over issues. And sometimes it's hard. Nobody wants to take authority over anything. I want everybody to love me and like me and But sometimes if it's causing division, you put something under a rug after a while, you're going to explode, and they are too. And sometimes the people that you think would be there for you the most would have your back, sometimes are the ones that will stab you in the back. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. But if we can ever keep unity, because see, God commands blessings where there's unity. He's not looking for a mega church. He's looking for a church that's united. 
where they're in one mind and one accord because that's when the Holy Spirit moves is when we're in one mind and one accord. That's when he moves. And I believe we're all here today in one mind and one accord because you don't come to the gathering. You don't come to a conference on Saturday for nothing. You're either a leader or you need a miracle in your life. And if you're a leader, you need a miracle too. (laughs) You need some encouragement, don't we? (laughs) So the problem was, you know, and even in our homes, God commands blessings in the homes when there's unity. We can't blame our churches, our children's ministry, the youth ministry, our schools, when all they hear is fussing and fighting at home. People are fasting, and I believe in fasting, and thank God for fasting, and I try to do some of it myself. But if you're talking about your next-door neighbor and hate the person on the pew, you might as well eat a cheeseburger. I just love to be real. Thank y'all for letting me be real. But really, we have got to keep unity because God commands blessings where there's unity. I heard um, Pat Robertson, you've heard of him, he built the 700 Club. And I was reading one of his books and he said that the Lord spoke to him and told him they needed to buy or build a library. Well, his people, uh, there's no way we can do it. The board said it's too expensive, we can't afford it. But he said, if y'all would just please, you don't have to give one dollar. But if you'll keep your mouth shut. And they did it. Sometimes I think we need to fast, opening our mouths. <laughs> but they did. They kept their mouth shut, and it was built in record time, debt free. So isn't it amazing what God can do when we let Him fight the battles for us and when we just trust Him? We're not going to ever agree on everything. We're never going to, but we have to trust God and the leader that he's put there because something with more than one head is a monster. Did y'all hear what I said? Some of you pastors are thinking, I don't know them monsters you're talking about. Well, after that failed... Then they tried to get him to a place called, oh no. Y'all say that with me. Oh no. I love that word. Oh no. Which was seven miles out of town. But you know what? His mama didn't raise no food. He knew they were going to trap him and probably try to kill him. Who knows what they were going to do? But he said, oh no. So there's some places, what is your oh no? You watch it by television, what is your oh no? What keeps you from doing what God called you to do? You know, there's some people you don't need to hang with. You've heard me say before, some people like an elevator. They'll take you up or they'll take you down. You need to know which button to press and that's discernment. Some places you don't need to go. Some of you are saying, you sound like a religious fanatic. I know I'm trying to save your life. Because the enemy knows your weakness. And he's going to do everything he can to get you back to your oh no. I pray this message blessed you. And no matter what you're going through right now, you understand that we serve a supernatural, miracle-working God of now. And he has not forgotten you. And if you're watching this program and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, that's the most important decision you'll ever make. And if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, just pray this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross just for me and you rose again on the third day. Come into my heart and come into my life. And from this day forth, I'm going to live for you. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations. I'll find you a good Bible-believing church to grow to be more like Jesus. And call that 1-800 number and let me know that you made this decision. It's just an encouragement to me. If you're watching and you need special prayer, call the 1-800 number. Please leave a message and we'll call you back. God is doing some great 
things. Now, I can't go off the air without thanking our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you. There is no way that we can do this without partners and without your help. And I've got a favor. If this program is blessing you, are you being fed? I ask you to send some kind of donation. We don't manipulate. We don't. We we just let the Holy Spirit speak to you. But any amount would be appreciated. Television is very expensive, but what an evangelistic tool in the time that we're living now. Now, next week, we're going to have a brand new show, a brand new message. But until then, this is Sandra Hancock with Voice of Hope. And remember, your hope is in Jesus. Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Many of you that are watching this broadcast, you feel like you're at the end of your rope. You've got some impossible situations, but I got some good news. You have hope in Jesus because we still serve a supernatural miracle working God of now. I also would like to invite you to come out and join us in one of our powerful conferences in a city near you. It would make our day to have you as our guest. If you think our broadcast is powerful, wait and come and experience the presence of the Lord. You'll love it. Also, I want to thank our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we thank you for helping us spread Jesus to a hurting world. God bless you all.